Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woken. I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, on the NA side of the game, I'm going to be talking about the Fake Grand Order, the stage event. Well, not event, it's a campaign that's coming. And something that's actually different from the JP version of the game, which is that they added a summon banner that was not on the JP side of the game. So that's going to be today's video. I'm going to go over everything. So, let's get right into it as I let my cat out one moment. All right, she's out, and now we can actually start. <laughs> so, campaign the stage, this happened on the JP version of the game. Kind of just something to celebrate uh, Fake Grand Order of the Stage, the Grand Temple of Time Solomon, Arx Nova, which I believe is the stage animation. I actually don't know is this is. I have no idea what this is released. To be fair, <laughs> I have no idea what this is, but whatever it is, it's coming to Crunchyroll. I know there's a movie and stuff, but I thought this was a stage play, but this looks all animated to me, but whatever. Um, it starts on the 21st. This is what you're actually going to get. Basically three golden fruits um, for the logins, and then one, two, three, four, five ports. Okay, nothing too crazy. There's also a two, chance, uh, two times chance of Super Suck and Great Suck, which is where Lancelot, Gilgamesh, and Kiru, Ozymandias, Leonardo da Vinci, Merlin, Gilgamesh, Kukulain, Kukulain, my bad, Kukulain Altar, and Mashkir Gilight. So yeah, here's the banner that is coming along with this, which features Gilgamesh, Ozymandias, uh, Caster Ku, uh, Caster Gilgamesh, and... Lancelot. So let's go over the units real quick. Lancelot, he's a four saber. I believe he is not story luck, so you can get him at any time. Um, hmm, he's probably the one I'm going to focus on least on, but what he is is that he's a single target arts unit. He has this right here. I've always kind of liked him. I think he probably eventually gets outclassed. I think he eventually gets a, No, he still doesn't really have one. I can tell you from using him, he's pretty solid in terms of just like constant arts. I don't know if looping is the right word, but you can just constantly just kind of shoot your NP off over and over again. It, but, I think that, nah, but it's only one hit, so I think you have to kind of get lucky with a chain and stuff like that. But he can deal a lot of damage. I remember that much. I don't use him that much because I have a uh, Bride Nero, but yeah, probably out of all of them, probably not the one most people are going to want to get, but still, he's featured, so if you want him, you can definitely try and get him. For actually, is he actually featured? We actually don't know the featured rates on this. We don't know if there's any solo dates, so I actually shouldn't say he's featured. He he's on the banner at the very least, but let's move on to the next one. Gilgamesh, this one I'll spend a little bit more time on. Gilgamesh is uh, pretty obvious. He's the probably one of the most sought after archers. Not because he's, I mean, he's still good. He's solid. Probably not on the NA side of the game just because um, Buster's in a bit of a weird place until their support comes out in an, during anniversary time. But he's definitely a fan favorite for a lot of people. I've never liked him personally. Um, but it's okay. Plenty of people also dislike the characters I like, so it's a never-ending cycle. But he is super well-liked, and he is pretty strong to go along with that. I think the worst thing he has is his charisma, <laughs> which is a... They should really buff this away from him. It's just an increase of party attack by 21%. Second... Man, he's... Uh, actually, this is not that bad. An increase on MP generation by 50% for three turns. Pretty nice. He starts with Collector EX, this skill was pretty bad, and then it turns into this, which is much better. Increases on crit star absorption rate for 3 turns, and then charges on NP gauge. 600% absorption and 30% NP, not too bad. He has passive skills, independent action A+, magic resistance E, and divinity B. His third append skill is related to Rider, and his old phantasm is the anti-world. I'll go with the EX ranked version of it. Increases on MP damage for by 30% for one turn, deals damage to all enemies, deals extra damage to all servants except for Animal Leash and Nullification enemies. 150% up on that at overcharge level 1. Damage is 400% and 600%. So, um, yeah, he's just a really solid buster archer. I can't remember if he's actually the best one on JP side. I want to say no. Not for Buster, at least. He is pretty solid. I think the only thing that's probably holding him back... Eh, actually, this cooldown's pretty nice, too. So, in the JP version of the game, the way that um, Buster kind of loops is that they constantly lower their NP gauge um, to the point of where they're able to do stuff. 
But usually the ones who are best at that are the ones who can. There's a, a specifically their their supporter lowers the rate of um, this cooldown rates, so he's able to get this back pretty easily. The only bummer is that it's not a 50% charger; it's a 30% charger. But there's actually a third buster dude that also gets used with the class that maybe makes it a little bit easier. So probably with the right CE setups you can definitely loop with him and deal good damage with him. I just don't know if he's the number one archer in terms of uh, that on GP. If you have a better idea of that you can feel free to tell me. I don't actually know. I could look at it but I'm afraid of potentially spoiling people so I'm not going to do that right now. Let's move on. We can actually go here to Gilgamesh Caster. Another not limited four. Uh, active skill, King's Return, increases party crit start generation for three turns, 100%. Second skill, increase party's attack by three turns, 21%. Increase party's art performance for three turns, increase party's debuff success for eight for three turns, 30%, 30%, not bad. Item construction, false A, territory creation A, divinity B. Third skill is a bonus against archers. As it is Noble Phantasm when it is uh, strengthened, it deals damage to all enemies, increases party defense by 20% for 3 turns, increases party's crit damage for 30% for 3 turns, the damage is 600% at level 1, and then it reduces their defense for 3 turns at 100%, and it is 10 hits, which is fantastic when it comes to arts, uh, and especially looping. So he's pretty solid um, in terms of <laughs> what you're looking for in a caster AoE for arts. I think I end up preferring... Uh, Sherazade, because I like Sherazade. But that doesn't mean that he's bad. He's actually pretty solid, and then he can also work as a pseudo support if you want to use him in that way too. With his ability to not only buff parties' arts, but also their attack and crit star generation. Probably can't be used with. Uh, actually, depending on the setup. I was going to say maybe you could use it with one Castoria, but it kind of depends on the unit and CE setups at that point, so it's a little bit more wonky if it works or not. But still, a very solid unit. Very good, very well, nice, and well done. Both of the Gilgamesh Servants, in my opinion, are good. So if you're a fan of Gil, then you are eating pretty damn good, in my opinion. Not to say that probably the Archer version couldn't use a buff of some kind, especially compared to maybe it just says something about how crazy broken most Servants are nowadays. Because obviously, I would still probably consider... I don't know if I would consider Bust Super Orion still the best straight up Buster Archer, even though he has a Noble Phantasm and Arts. He's a Buster Gorilla with an Arts NP that makes him crazy. But that's single target. It's a little bit different when you're looking at it in that perspective. But next, let's go on to Ozymandias. Another not limited. This is important because the last unit on this list is in fact limited. Uh, Ozymandias. This is a weird unit, but let's get into it. This Charisma eventually will get upgraded into Pharaohs of the Hot Sands, which will increase party's attack for three turns. Uh, gain 10 crit stars every turn on Sunlight Battlefield and increases party's crit damage on the Sunlight Battlefield for three turns. 20% and 30%. Uh, Imperial Privilege. Oh, God. They really need to buff Imperial Privilege. 60% chance to increase on attack for three turns. 60% chance to increase on defense for three turns. and recover some HP. 40%, 40%, 3,000 uh, 3, heal. And the third skill that makes it completely useless to <laughs> even bother with the 60% chance is the protection from raw A+. Charges on parties and gauge with 20%. Increases party buffer self-success rate for one turn. 40%, so you basically use it with this and you can guarantee that 40% for yourself. His passive skills are magic resistance B, riding A+, divinity B. His third skill is a bonus against archers. His Noble Phantasm, which is a rank EX, and then eventually turns into this after his second strengthening. I think this is his first one, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Deals damage to one enemy, seals their NP for one turn, 500% chance to grant self the Sunlight Battlefield buff for five turns, then reduces his own skill cooldowns by one, 800% damage at level one, and then reducing their defense by 100% by 20%. This unit is a weird one because he is obviously support focused, but he's a support focused unit that can also deal a lot of damage with their Noble Phantasm. Um, so it kind of makes him like he has a kind of flexible role where it's one of those things where it's like, yes, he supports, but also if things get down to it, he can deal out the damage as well. It's a very different, it's kind of like a... Uh, 
not in the specific jack of all trades. I guess the most a red mage would probably be the most things where he ha a red mage will occasionally have some buff skills, but probably isn't necessarily the greatest at actually you know healing the entire party or someone who's actually focused on buffing the entire party. They're not really into that. But they still can give out some good buffs, and they can still deal enough damage for them to be warranted, especially with this 10 crit star. It's pretty nice. Again, you do have the Noble Phantasm if you're not under a Sunlight Battlefield, but thankfully he can supply his own Sunlight Battlefield. I would say the biggest bummer about units who have the specific uh, like requirement to be on this battlefield is the units that don't have that, like it ends up feeling a little bit weird, so it's funny that they had to buff him again to be like, okay, well, our first buff, we gave him a buff if he's ever in the sunlight. And then they realize, well, now we should buff him again so that he can always just bring the sunlight wherever he is. So, I end up liking him. I think I don't use him very much just because if I'm looking for a single target uh, writer, I go for Quetz. I think under... it's Which is funny because I'm pretty sure Ozymandias, if I had um, left him... That's what's the right word. If I if like pound for pound, I think he's technically better than Quetz, but I still prefer using Quetz because I like Quetz. So I made mine super buff, so that it would be possible for me to actually like use him in that way. So hey, it all works out in the end in that case. And finally, the last unit. Ah, uh, here he is. It is. Ooh, Collins, the caster version. This one's locked because he's story servant. He's a three. Spoilers, I'm not going to reveal this. But there is a spoiler. Actually, I need to pause and make sure that there isn't another spoiler in something in the skill description. Okay, there is in fact a spoiler <laughs> in one of his. So I'm not going to go into it. Just know this third skill gets buffed eventually and makes him very good. Let me look at the buff real quick. Uh, okay, so basically eventually the third skill will get buffed in a certain manner to make it so that he gets a buff where he gets super, he gets guts and then at the end he dies, but then when the guts triggers and he, uh, he gets 80% NP back, which is very good. Um, I can't go into more reasons as to why that is, but just know that he gets an 80% 80, 80 uh, NP charger at some point. And now let's go into his passive skills. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm good to talk about first skill. So yeah, the, the first skill, Primeval Ruin, increases own crit damage for three turns, increases his own buff, debuff resistance for three turns, charges his own NP gauge, 30%, 50%, 50%, crit damage is 50%, debuff resistance is 50%, and NP gauge is 30%. His second skill is Protection from Arrows A, grants self evasion for three attacks, increase own defense for three turns, 18% 18, uh, 18 defense. This is a fan fucking tastic skill. I think this is the best version of the skill. Uh, the Protection from Arrows. I think actually. Yeah, let me see. Just be. Yeah, so. This version by uh, Ku, the one everyone uses, is actually B rank. And he has an A rank version of this one that gives just a slight more defense, but. Uh, that makes him the best version of this one, I guess. He is going to need it because he is a caster. Uh, his append skill for the third slot is uh, increased attack against foreigners. Weird. And finally, his noble phantasm is the Wicker Man. This is, I think, what he currently is in NA, but eventually he gets a buff. I actually don't know if the strengthening is on... Uh... I, it's hard for me to remember this one, but let's assume. Anyway... At the strongest point, increases his own buster performance by 20% for 3 turns, activates first, deals damage to all enemies, um, 100%. MP level 1 is 400%, but if you get it all the way to level 5, because he is a 3 star, three star so in theory it should be easy to do, it's 600% damage. Reduces his own defense for 3 turns, inflicts burn for 10 turns to them, if they are even alive by this point. 10% defense down and burn damage is 300 uh, through a crazy mess of things, even though he has three arts cards, his noble phantasm is Buster, he ends up being, I think, the best caster for Buster. <laughs> and the reason is, is because the specific, there's two reasons why. It's specific to deal with a, um, one is there many supports, um, 
Well, obviously. It's just the way the Buster supports are just kind of built. He has a way to basically self-sustain his own uh, Noble Phantasm pretty damn easily. And his skills come back at a decent time frame. So that means that he's able to get this crazy amount of NP gain and then basically get, be able to get it back. So in terms of looping and actually firing off your Noble Phantasm, he does perfectly damn good. And also because he is a 3 star, he's able to get an MP level 5 at 600%, which makes him really good. So yes, right now in the game, which is really funny because for the longest time, I want to say this coup wasn't the greatest, and then one day he got a buff. And that buff completely changed how he was kind of viewed. So really a lot of units are just like one or two buffs away, or three buffs in Kuz's case I guess, from just being an unstoppable force. They're just like a lot of units, just like if you tweak certain things about them and you try to make them good. And to be fair, I'm not showing it off, there's a lot that they add to this third skill. I just don't want to show it because I think there's a potential spoiler in there so I don't want to, for the, ah, oops. Well now I have to edit this video to make sure that doesn't show up. But anyway, it's fine. <laughs> so hard to talk about this unit anyway he is really good um he does end up showing up later on in a banner that is lost belt which is probably where i'm gonna summon for him i'm not gonna summon for him in this banner because i already have every unit here except for gilgamesh and i don't like gilgamesh so i don't see a reason to summon for this banner because specifically the one i want most is this guy right here because story lock servants are extremely difficult to actually get um especially the three star ones um you have to be specifically trying to get them if you actually want them if you're just randomly pulling even on story banner there's not a chance that you'll get them just because there's how so many three stars in the game already so yeah he's definitely worth having if you're someone who's like oh he seems to suck right now i would say hold on to him really don't get rid of him <laughs> just hold on to him because i swear to god he will eventually get extremely good but yeah that's his banner. This is a kind of a nice surprise. This is definitely up there for the people who want to um, summon for Gilgamesh. Like I said, he's an extreme fan favorite and he's well loved. So this is a great bait banner for the people who want Gilgamesh. Really sucks if you weren't planning the summon on Gilgamesh, but it is what it is on that one. Um, this also probably means he won't be one of the units there for Thanksgiving. But hey, you never know. The Thanksgiving banner is super... Ran not random, but we just don't know what units will be included in that. So there's no way to prepare for it. You're just going to have to hope that it's not a unit you badly want. Or a unit that you know you can't stop yourself from summoning on. But yeah, that's this mana coming up. I wish you the best of luck if you end up summoning. I'm not summoning on this. I'm already pushing my luck as it is. And like I said, I already have a vast majority. And I am waiting for a better banner for this coup for me. So... Till next time, everyone. You guys have a good day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.